Hi, this is Dave Vellante. We're back live, Silicon Angle's continuous coverage here. We're at Storage Networking World, SNW. We're here with Rob Davis, CTO of QLogic. Welcome, Rob. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, it's good to have you uh, again. You were on theCUBE at Oracle Open World, right? Yeah. Uh, last summer. Yeah, we had uh, a blast. Yeah, that was good. good event. Uh, packed, packed house. Well, we're here at uh, the Santa Clara Convention Center, a new venue for SNW. Usually, Usually this time of year, what are we in Orlando or Orlando or Dallas Phoenix. or Phoenix? Go yeah. Back and forth. So this is a, maybe they used to have them here. The first time I've ever been to an SNW in, in the old days, in, they had them here in Silicon Valley. Yeah, seems like a good good place to have it, right? I mean, it's you know relatively convenient for I'm you guys. I'm from Minnesota, so anywhere there isn't yeah. snow is good for me. <laughs> are you you don't live in Minnesota now? Do you? I do. You do? Oh, nice. Okay. How's it going out there? Are you uh, the ice melted yet? Starting to. <laughs> I still you, have about. Do you uh, ice fish? Uh, I have, not do. I thought you had to if you're a Minnesota resident. They yeah. raise your taxes if you don't want ice fish, don't <laughs> <Somewhere>. they? <laughs> and, uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about convergence and, uh, and, and FCOE. You've got, you got a panel tomorrow, kick butt advancements in, uh, in FCOE. And fiber channel. And, and fiber channel as well. Yeah. Uh, oh, I guess it's kick bus button enhancements in fiber channel and FCOE. Exactly. Okay, cool. Exactly. So, uh, so is fiber channel and FCOE kick and butt? Uh, they are. Uh, they're in our product lines anyway, or we're you know shipping more fiber channel ports than we ever have, and we're shipping more FCOE ports than we ever have. Why, why do you think that is? What are the drivers? Well, it's different. So for fiber channel, the driver is that it's the storage technology of choice in the enterprise data center. You know, it's tried and true, been there for years, and continues to evolve um, through the different speeds. It, with FCOE, with FCOE, it's all about convergence. Um, you know, data centers are getting to be very complicated places with all different kinds of new protocols. Uh, iSCSI was a storage protocol that came a couple years ago now, FCOE. And convergence allows you to put um, both the fiber channel sand and the Ethernet land into one port coming out of your server. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about that. Um, you know, I've said that, that FCOE is inevitable, even though a lot of the users that I talk to, they're not ready. They don't want to touch it. You know, they're not... It's not a user pull type of thing. Well, things it's happen slowly in storage. Yeah, they really do. Well, yeah. especially because you know you don't want to lose data, and exactly. you know data is a very important thing. And if it's working, why? Well, the land why goes mess down, and you lose a couple emails. You know, life goes on. But Reconfigure things. No big deal. Storage goes. Yeah. You know, the whole business can grind to a halt. Yeah, and people get get fired or worse. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, you know, where I where I grew up, they break your legs for that <laughs> kind of stuff. <laughs> but um, so so so, it, but it really seems to be. Uh, more of a technology-driven, a vendor-driven initiative as opposed to a user pull. And we were well, talking off-camera about some of the drivers for that, right? Well, and I think there's drivers um, for convergence just from the simplicity standpoint, mm -hmm. you know? But I think that in, like, Blade servers, there's a real pull. And we're seeing a lot of early success in the Blade server space because you've got, you know, a server that has a backplane with these different networks on it. And if they can get one of those networks out, like pull the fiber channel out and put it over Ethernet with FCOE, they can reduce the cost, the heat, the power, the cooling, you know. And the power. server vendors are really pushing you hard for this, right? Absolutely. Yeah, so because they're out of real estate, they're dealing with heat density problems, right? They're at the max. And right? it comes out of the Blade server as a fiber channel port. So we have a, a product that's based on the Bullet ASIC, and and so that that provides you uh, a conversion from FCOE to fiber channel. So as it comes out of the Blade server, it's still pure fiber channel. Yeah. Okay. So so let's paint a picture for the audience here. Um, so so t traditionally, you've got a a, a LAN card, a, you know, adapter mm -hmm. in the server, and you've got a, a a fiber channel adapter coming out of the server. And you've exactly. probably got a redundant pair of those, right? Yep. Going to separate networks. Absolutely. Right. And so that's taken up more real estate. Yep. Um, and and you might even have a ten gig e. You know, especially nowadays, right? Yep. Uh, you know, uh, f for some high speed stuff, and so the the real estate on there is really packed, especially right. on a blade server, right? Yeah. So in a stand up server, those are cards that go into the PCI slots, but in a blade server, they're special mezzanine cards, and you know they'd much rather use that space on the processor blade for more Intel processors than for I/O. Yeah, right. So okay, and so. So, so Converge Network Adapters come in. You guys announced, when did you announce the, your oh first Oh boy, I think our first one was it probably three years ago, so maybe more. You're in so Gen 3 our, now? Yeah, we you're just, in the cadence we just of every brought out our third 12 generation. months or so, yep. new, new, yep, new gen, third gen. Yeah. You guys, uh, are you ahead of the game there? Are you the leader? Oh, well, we think we are. You know, um, Del Oro seems to think we are. We're at least... Yeah, she does a good job. Tam Del Oro is sort of the, 
the leader in, in tracking that market, isn't she? Well, she? I say she. I mean, it's her company, right? And she's the, 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 the CEO of the company. But they do a good job. So, um, okay, so you're on your third generation. Now, that, yep. that CNA essentially brings fiber channel and Ethernet together, and FCOE is the key technol- a key technology there, right? So it's 10, it's 10 gig E, yep. and it's fiber channel in a single card, right? Right, so think about two adapter cards plugged into your server, one Ethernet, one 10 gig Ethernet, one 8 gig fiber channel. You put them together, and you have a CNA. So it's one card that supports both fiber channel protocols over FCOE and 10 gig Ethernet LAN protocols over Ethernet. So now instead of two redundant connections coming out of the server, I got one. Yep. Going to, say, for instance, the top of the rack switch. Yep. Right? Okay. Yep. And, and I presume the CNA technologies are, are migrating into the top of the rack switch as well? Well, that's where our bullet ASIC um, yep. from our switching product line comes into play. And that goes into top of rack switches or blade server switches, which is the same thing embedded in a blade server. And it converts from the FCOE that's running inside the Ethernet to back to fiber channel or regular Ethernet, depending now, on what's and, in And the now that packet. traditionally, again, went out to two separate switches, right? And then it'll go from the top of rack to into the existing SAN in the data center or into the existing fi- uh, Ethernet. Now, point. Cisco just had an announcement, I think it was last week even, where they announced some high-end switches yep, that were end-to-end fiber channel the over Nexus, Ethernet. Uh, and, 7,000. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and 10 gig E. So... It seems like the IT audience is one day going to wake up and all these, all these capabilities are going to be there, and it's just going to be, well, we might as well use them because it's going to cut our cost in half. It's going to lower our, our heat density, or our, I guess our heat output, right? Mm-hmm. And it's going to cut our cost. So, I mean, that's kind of the way th- this thing's going to go. We're putting convergence across our product line, whether it's our adapters that we talked about or our switches that we talked about or even our storage routers, which allow you to connect all the different... Um, technologies, whether it's FCOE or iSCSI or Fiber Channel, together from the perspective of moving or migrating data from different arrays. So today, most of the arrays are either Fiber Channel or iSCSI. But when you put in an iSCSI array to cut costs, you need to still move the data from the Fiber Channel array. And that's what our data migration router products do. How about this concept of virtual I.O.? You hear a lot of people talk about that. and uh, uh, From and, the and perspective of uh, virtual operating systems? Well, virtualizing the I.O., essentially, right? So uh, 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 let's say a VMware environment, and your your your, your I.O. going through the roof, right? I.O. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I.O.'s per MIP are, are going crazy. And, and instead of having physical I.O., you can now share that. That, that, that resource and abstract it and, and we get have, better utilization of I.O. And we have a lot of features. Um, we call it um, converged flat, or converged v- VM, which goes into our adapters, which allows the virtual operating system to offload some of those functions and does that convergence in the adapter hardware instead of in the uh, virtual operating system, you know, CPU cycles. QLogic is a pretty interesting company. How, how long have you been there? Uh, I've been there since the acquisition of Ancor back in 2000. Okay, so you saw the whole transition in the... Well, and Ancor used to do adapters and fiber channel switches back when fiber channel wasn't even a full spec yet. So You guys made some pretty big bets back then, didn't you? What was... Uh, were you involved in that? Or were you I was involved from the selling side. You know, I was selling Ancor to QLogic, not from yeah, okay. the QLogic side. But then you guys decided to, to sort of... To sort of bet on FC and, 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 and bet on sort of, you know, and integration. At that, right? at that time, we had Parallel SCSI products, and we bet on the transition of Parallel SCSI, if you, anybody can remember that. That was yeah, that sure, sort of right. SaaS, right? right, right. Uh, we bet on that moving from, um, from Parallel SCSI to Fiber Channel, which used to be, you know, the parallel version of SCSI before SaaS came along. And, 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 and a lot of people thought you were crazy doing that, didn't they? You didn't, Perhaps. You didn't have, I mean... Scott McGill used to say, "If everybody, if everybody agrees with your strategy, you're in deep shit." <laughs> but, uh, but so, so that was kind of you know, you guys made some some bold calls, and it's and it's kind of paid off, hasn't it? I mean, you guys have done done pretty well. It seems like we ended up, you know, us and and Emulex ended up as the two you know finalists, if you will, in the fiber channel world on the adapter. It's a good side. business. I mean, you, you guys make good margins on that business. And uh, I'm on and the technical side, but that's what they tell me. No, it's all public information. Right? It's, it's, uh, it's easy to see, but uh, but but you've also changed the company a little bit from just a pure pl- uh, uh, supplier of cards or adapters. You, you, you're now in the well, that was the business. switch acquisition of Ancor, and yeah. then um, more recently, 
Um, we brought in uh, InfiniBand technology with two acquisitions, and then most recently we brought in Ethernet adapter technology with the acquisition of, of NetZen. I want to talk about, uh, um, that's another thing, we're talking about land on motherboard, you know, that's an interesting topic. Let's, let's, let's start there. What are, you, what are you seeing there? Well, your um, analogy where sooner or later the whole data center gets converted over to these new switches that can handle FCOE like the new Cisco 7000. You know, it'll take a while, but eventually the data center will migrate to those. With If you couple LOM technology on top of that, land on motherboard technology, and you can imagine that we're putting those FCOE CNA kind of technologies into those LOMs, pretty soon you've got the whole data center converted over and the LOM ports on your servers already support it. You can see where the move to FCOE could be accelerated rather quickly. Right, right. And now, of course, the the you got some Ethernet guys. Um, uh, well, that was one of the things sharpening that, their knives to jump into this space. Right, you got you got you got yeah, Broadcom, definitely. and then of course Intel. Right, yep. saying, hey, it's all going to go Ethernet. You know, what do you think about that? Um, well. When they say it all, all is going to go Ethernet, I think we agree. That's They're what right, CNA yeah. does, right? <laughs> is it's all Ethernet. Um, but, um, you know, we're still shipping more fiber channel ports every month than we did the month before. So I think, you know, there's different tools for different tasks. And I think people that want to focus on the highest performance, most reliable, you know, today that's probably fiber channel. And in the future, whether FCOE or Ethernet can take that over, you know, I think... Well, um, well, so we've talked about how it, these transitions take a long time. Exactly. And, and exactly. FC to FCOE, and then that's hardened, isn't it? Why, why yeah. is it so hard for people to have a, a hardened fiber channel stack? Not, not a lot of guys do, right? Who is, it's basically you guys, Emulex, well, Arcade, I mean. Yeah, you know, it's, it just is a lot of, um, in, in fiber channel, it's not like Ethernet, where there's millions of ports, and it's, there's probably tens of thousands of people that understand it in a lot of detail. In the fiber channel world, that's probably thousands of people yeah. instead. And the customers are much more demanding, like we talked before about you know losing an email versus losing the data set of right. a company. And so there's also a lot of companies building products that have idiosyncrasies in them. And over the years, that fiber channel stack gets hardened to all those idiosyncrasies. You know, you've got like... Um, uh, subsystems from EMC and Atachi and NetApp and HP and all of them do things a little bit differently and you have to know and have worked through all the problems with all those subsystems and that's just a few of the you know there's probably a hundred different subsystems just a lot of permutations and exactly. and, and, and a, a limited skill set of people who know how to solve those problems and then there's the drivers and all the different operating systems and the idiosyncrasies there then there's the switches and the interoperability issues that are well known and and what percent, of, what percent of those people live in Southern California and are, are <laughs> locked inside uh, the, the Key Logic building? Well, right? in Emulex. In Emulex, and right? Okay. That's right. You guys, you're a stone's yeah. throw apart, right? So, and then the other thing I wanted to talk about was InfiniBand, right? I mean, that's okay. sort of an interesting area, right? That's Larry Ellison's made a lot of noise. Larry Ellison loves InfiniBand, right? I mean, he's jamming it into the Exadata and Exalogic, and he's, he's, he's taking a big chunk of Mellanox. And, and it, fits into, it fits into storage in a couple of different ways. So you mentioned the Exadata, but there's also um, the, the pure, um, uh, the TrueScale, which is the product that IBM has, which is just like yeah, Exadata. Right, right, and right. then there's um, uh, Isilon, who clusters their NAS heads with InfiniBand. Actually, NetApp uses InfiniBand to cluster their... their so high-speed clustering, server-to-server -server communications, exactly. very low latency. Exactly. And that, um, that's where it fits into storage, um, more as an internal technology. There are a couple of companies that make actual native InfiniBand ports. I think DDR, DDN does, yeah. and, and maybe Genio, which is now NetApp. But um, InfiniBand is really designed for high-performance compute, you know, the, the, the HPC environment, the Lawrence Livermore Labs, the... Um, the geothermal or the geo oil hunting, you know, applications, uh, crash simulations at like uh, um, the automobile makers, the simulations of drugs. What's what's going on now in HPC is because of the uh, immense. Um, availability of CPU cycles are basically free, right, from Intel with all the cores. You can now build one big computer with a lot of small computers for a very low cost using InfiniBand to connect the memories together. 
Yes. Yeah, so so you, obviously it's an HPC, but it's going more mainstream. I mean, you mentioned Isilon, right? They're, yeah. they're starting to penetrate, you know, traditional markets like insurance and even financial services. But and you have to remember that it's built inside the Isilon box. It's not like InfiniBand comes out. In the same with Exadata, it's inside the, the Oracle box. So it's very good at connecting processors together, you know, processor memories and applications running across multiple processors. And that's what it's designed for. Like Fiber Channel is very good at connecting storage to servers. Yeah, so, so what's going on with QLogic in InfiniBand? You know, that seems to be, to me anyway, an area that, that is a great opportunity for you guys. And, and you haven't so. made a lot of noise there. We uh, think so. Historically, anyway. Is that, is that changing? I mean, is that on your strategic radar? Or? <laughs> You know, I, is this the year of QLogic InfiniBand? I think, it, you know, this is a S&W, right? So this is a storage show. If you were at Supercomputer Show last year, you would have seen, you know, our booth, which is as big as this whole area and yeah. full of HPC verbiage and messaging. And we had um, a scientist from Lawrence Livermore Lab giving a big presentation. So it just depends on the venue. But, I mean, it's just, it, it seems like every market there's, there's, there's room for two. Right, and Mellanox has obviously done very well with InfiniBand, but now with Ellison taking, what, I think, a 10% share of, of, uh, of Mellanox, if, if I'm an Oracle competitor, I'm not so comfortable with that. I would think that's a <laughs> that's great true. trend for QLogic, and have, have you guys been able to capitalize on that? So the PureScale product has us in it. Yeah, you okay. Know, so you heard it here first, folks. So so, no, it's, uh, I know, that's, you know, public, that's public information. information. I'm teasing. So it just <laughs> sort of depends on, on the OEM. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I think we see it as a market similar to... Um, fiber channel from the perspective is in the end there were two players you know us and Emulix on the adapter side and we see the HPC market is now you know with Voltaire being acquired by Melanox it's now a two player that's right a two player I mean market. essentially Voltaire was Melanox right I mean it was but, uh, but it wasn't they one were company. and they weren't they, they, they were the yeah. systems they, they bought Melanox chips and they built systems out of them yeah okay and so there's considerable value add there yeah absolutely yeah okay so now it's down to two now it's down to two uh, you like your chances <laughs> you know, I think if, if you look at history, um, we were way behind uh, Emulex when we started that race. So, yeah. So you're predicting similar things for InfiniBand? Or? I'm just saying that we have a good chance. <laughs> I think you do too. All right, we're with Rob Davis, uh, CTO of QLogic. We're talking convergence. We're talking InfiniBand, LAN on motherboard. We're at SNW um, tomorrow. Kick butt advancements in uh, Fiber Channel and Fiber Channel over, over Ethernet. Rob, thanks very much for coming on the Cube. Thank you. It's great to see you. Thanks All for right, having me. We'll see you around.